Most people think of HT radios as a backup, but what if that little HT on your belt is way more capable than you realize? In this video, I'll show you how I've used a simple HT for communications during some public service events and what you need to know before relying on one as your primary radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Over the last couple of years, I've been using HTs more and more. In fact, I've even used these for public service events that our club has provided communications for. Now you might be asking, why would I want to use an HT? And the primary answer is pretty simple. I can pack all of the HTs that you see under the table in this one small little bag. So it condenses my gear down quite a bit versus carrying multiple mobile radios. And with the right antenna, you may find that 5 watts is more than enough. Now, there are some things to consider before you go down this path. The first one is going to be the right antenna. My daily driver is these little diamond antennas. These are short and typically will cut it if I'm not trying to communicate very far. If I need a little bit more reach, I'm going to go to something like the signal stuff antennas. These are fantastic and I like that they can just be bound up into a little nut and they are compact and easily packable. Now, if you need a little bit more reach, well, then you can go to something like this telescoping antenna. Now, I can't remember the brand name for this specific one, but I'll leave a link down in the description below. And if you need to get out even a little bit further than that, well, you can always go with a roll-up J-pole antenna like this Ed Fong that I have here. N9TAX also builds an excellent roll-up J-pole antenna. Now, another consideration you'll need to take into account is exactly what do you want to do. All of these are capable of doing voice communications, whether that's simplex or via a repeater. Now, if you're going to be doing digital communications like Winlink or APRS, well, that will change the choice of radios. Some of these, like the Kenwood D74 and this BTEC UV Pro, have built-in Bluetooth TNCs that we can easily pair with a laptop. The other radios on the table, well, we're going to have to use something like a DigiRig in order to connect them to the computer and be able to do those digital modes. Another consideration will be power. Yes, each of these HTs has a battery pack on it. In fact, this FT5 has an extended battery pack on it to give it longer life. But some of these will do better and some of them will do worse when it comes to battery life. Now, maybe you're doing a short event and one battery will take care of your needs. However, if it doesn't, then you're going to need to consider multiple batteries or you need to consider putting an external battery on the radio. And that's one of the reasons that I prefer either a radio that will accept 12 volts directly or one that can be recharged or powered with USB-C. Radios like the BTEC UV Pro and the Redivus R89 will both accept USB-C as power input. Other radios like the Yezus and the Kenwoods will take 12 volts direct into the body of the radio. I have done several events where I'm using almost exclusively HT radios. This past June, during the air show, I ran multiple HT radios for various reasons. The VX6 is an excellent weather radio. So I had this thing scanning the weather bands, listening for any alerts that might come out through the NOAA radios because we had weather that moved through the area the weekend of the air show. And some of that was actually severe warned. The Redivus RA-89 served as my primary voice radio during that event if I was inside the RV. But I also had one of the Kenwood radios available if I decided to venture out away from the RV that I could carry on my belt. And then I was using another radio to listen for the west side net control station. Now, not all events require that many radios. And let me give you another example. 
in the state park in Huntsville, Alabama, that's Montesano State Park, in the RV section, the APRS coverage is pretty limited. For the last couple of years, I've used a simple HT to be a fill-in digipeter, allowing everyone in the RV section of the park to get into the main wide area gateway in Huntsville. During the Christmas parade that we support each year, I typically will use an FT-65 that's in my portable digipeter kit to serve as the digipeter for that particular event. And then I'll take a radio like the Kenwood D74 and carry it on my body so that I've got APRS wherever I go. And that D74 also serves as my primary voice radio. During field day for the last couple of years, an HT has served as both a fill-in digipeter and my primary radio to get into the local 2-meter Winlink gateway. Then I've usually got another radio like the VX6 hanging around that I can use as my primary voice radio. So I hope this video gave you some insight on how I'm using HTs on a broader and broader basis each year. Often, 5 watts and one of these little radios is all I need. But I'll be the first to admit that it takes very careful consideration to pull this off. That antenna choice is going to be the primary concern that you need to worry about. Because if we're trying to reach out a longer distance, well, that's probably going to require you get something like the Edfong or the N9TAX roll-up J-Pole, get that thing on a mast, and get it up in the air 20 feet. Now, two of my favorite radios are the D75 and the BTEC UV Pro. Both of these radios will allow you to communicate with it uh, over Bluetooth with your computer. So once you get those connected together, it's very, very easy to do both Winlink and APRS. And because they are such capable radios and they give me that Bluetooth capability, well, that's why they are two of my favorites. In addition to that careful consideration of the antenna, you've also got to carefully analyze each radio that you're going to take. As much as I like this D75, the weather alert feature on it, I just don't like this at all. Two of the best radios that I've got for that are the, v, uh, the Yezu VX6, I love this radio, and this thing will wake the dead when the NOAA weather radios alert you to incoming weather. Another really good one that I like is, again, the BTEC UV Pro. This one is just slightly less capable when it comes to alerting you of incoming weather. It's not quite as loud. It's the only difference. It's not quite as loud as that VX6. But if I'm using the BTEC UV Pro for, say, APRS, well, that's where I grab a second radio and allow it to scan the weather. And since these things are so compact, I don't have to worry about a lot of extra uh, things weighing me down. Two or three of these radios still weighs less than a mobile radio that you would be carrying around for an event like that. And if you want to do multiple things at an event, like an APRS Digipeter and a weather alert station, well, you're probably going to need two of those mobile radios. And that's really going to add a lot of weight. And that's why I've been trying to rely more and more on these HT radios, because I can just get so much capability in such a small package. And as long as you uh, don't run out of battery, well, they do pretty dang good. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.